Hey everybody, my name is Necrovumex, welcome to my channel, you're listening to Potato Cast, and uh, this, uh, I don't know if this is a good idea or not to do one of these, I um, haven't done one of these in a long time. It's been actually four months since the last Potato Cast, and this was always yeah, envisioned as, as being uh, an at least partially weekly thing, you know, that I would try to do it every week, um, but it's 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 become very difficult and I'm gonna explain what that means but um I'm just uh, I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a bad spot right now I'm, uh, I'm in a dark place and uh, I felt that the best thing to do would be to uh, get it all out and just talk about everything that's going on and uh, I haven't done this in so long that I'm kind of backed up you know you guys are my therapy you guys are my uh, my outlet even if I don't get replies or comments or anything. And I always get comments on these, eh? but, uh, I just like, I, even if nothing, even if I got like zero views, it, it does help to actually sit and talk about it. I don't know how smart it is to be doing this right now. Um, I really don't know, uh, what to say, uh, other than, you know, I'm, I'm sorry it's been so long. Um, I don't know how many people have picked up on it, but I, I have been in a dark place for like quite a while now. And um, I'm explaining it and uh, sort of all the shit that's been piling on my life and the trauma condo line that continues. And uh, and, and I'm going to talk about it, but, you know, first I just want to, I mean, you may have noticed it. I just want to get this out of the way. Like, content has been going up on the channel very regularly. Um, I rarely miss uploads. When I do, I just... You know, like, whatever, it'll be up the next day or whatever. Um, but it's all old content. And I have been recording, though. I've, I've been recording as well. I've been, um, not every day, but, you know, like, but there's there's a good buffer. Uh, the RFL content that you guys have been seeing, hopefully you've been seeing it, um, is, is actually fairly new. That, that actually was recorded not too long ago. I decided to fast track that for reasons. Um, but there's lots of other stuff recorded that was going to be before it. You know, I just, I just decided to upload that earlier. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, hmm, let me just, before I, you know, maybe it'll help me to get my uh, head together to talk about all this shit, but let me actually go and, uh, reply to your comments on the last one. Now, I, I feel bad about that. I feel bad about not having done an episode in four months, not only because it's been rough on me, but because I feel like, uh, you guys, there's not a whole hell of a lot of questions. There's like 10 comments here. But I, I feel like you guys are uh, are, are expecting replies and, uh, you know, kind of owed it in a sense. I mean, not, not in the literal sense of that I owe you guys anything, but um, I don't know. It's kind of expected. Let me just get to those. So I'm sorry that these questions are four months old, but let's see. So Nick Jackson said, uh, in my opinion, the last good video BHD did, let's talk about Blasphemous HD, uh, was both his videos about the night his house got robbed. Since then, it's all garbage. Sorry to say, but I'm not a big fan. Not a fan of Batman the Animated Series. What? In my eyes, Batman Beyond is the far superior show. Look, uh, wow. I mean, Batman Beyond was a good show, but far superior to Batman the Animated Series. You got to be shitting me. Uh, why exactly do you not like Seth MacFarlane? Because he's an unlikable douche that makes bad shows. I hope that clears that up. Also, do you wish? The MCU would just end already. No, why would I? The, the movies that have been... Like, they literally have not made a bad film. They, they, they The closest they made to a bad film was... Um, my least favorite in the whole shebang was um, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, which I thought was just, like, really all over the place. And, you know, I, I mean, I covered that in my review. I mean, it, it came together at, towards the end. It had a good third act, but the first act was a mess. The second act was a little better, but... I felt like it was a mess, but it, it came together. It was still very entertaining. I don't understand why I would want it to end already. Um, when I, I mean, I still go to see these movies, um, and I still review them. And well, I know I haven't done an Infinity War review actually, but um, I'll get to that eventually. I'll, I'll probably like save it for like another comics on or something. But uh, I, yeah, you're saying a lot of weird shit. As for you know, it's interesting because I haven't seen uh, a Blasphemous HD in like a long time, and uh, I guess he has like a different channel now. I don't know what the fuck happened with him, but, um, yeah, I haven't watched him much. So this next is actually a death toll about me. That's, that's, uh, that's AJ. Well, 
I talk to him almost every day, but I'll, I'll, I'll read it out anyway. As far as I'm concerned, VR is a fad, and I can't wait for it to die. It was a fad in the early 90s. It's a fad now. The technology simply isn't there yet, and what technology we do have is priced out of range for most people. Well, I actually want to uh, not only agree with that, but expand on it and say that um, it doesn't matter if the technology is there or not for virtual reality, because even if the technology was there and it was portrayed or not portrayed, or that it was at the level that it's portrayed at, and I, I still don't give a fuck about it. Like, I really don't care about virtual reality. Like, there was a time in the 90s when it was, like, like a like a new thing. Like, I cared about it because it was, like, interesting, and I was a teenager, and I was just very, you know, dazzled by new technology and everything. But, like, and, I, and I'm not... It's not that I don't like new technology. It's It's just that, like... I, it, I don't care about it if it's not something I'm going to use. And I, I couldn't give a shit about VR. I don't need that experience in, in my life. All right. So slasher dude 100 says, hashtag potato. Hey, Necro, it's shit that things haven't been going well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I know. And I hope things improve for you and your family. Hang in there, man. I have two questions. Number one, what non-superhero comics do you like? Um... Well, you see, when I when I read comics, I generally do stick to the superhero stuff. That's not to say that I don't ever read stuff that's not in superhero stuff, but you know that that's always sort of been my wheelhouse. Like when I was a kid, um, I started with a lot of like kid comics, like 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 a, a Richie Rich and that kind of shit. But then like once somebody introduced me to, like Batman and like Superman and Spider Man and all that stuff, it was, it was pretty much like didn't look back. Um, you know, like I read a little bit of The Walking Dead, and I um, kind of enjoyed that, but not enough to like read like the whole thing, and definitely not enough to put up with that TV show because the TV show is not not super good. Um, yeah, I actually can't think of anything off the top of my head that isn't at least related to to superheroes in some way because um, even the stuff that's sort of like way out there is is related to it in some way. Um, so I'm sorry I can't really answer that. Uh, number two, in which series do you think are the better movies, Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street? <laughs> it's a really good question, but it's also a really easy one to answer. As much as I like um, the Friday the 13th movies uh, just for being what they are, um, Nightmare on Elm Street just has a really a better track record of being quality films. The first one is, is just like... The, the first Nightmare on Elm Street is better than any of the Friday the 13th movies. Um, the third Nightmare on Elm Street is as good as the best Friday the 13th. Um, the seventh Nightmare on Elm Street is also really good. Um, it's weird how the, the odd-numbered ones are, are like better. Although I didn't really like five as much. Um, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't like great. But like, then if you were to look at like the bad ones, like the worst Nightmare on Elm Street is probably part two. And it's still, like, not that bad, you know what I mean? It's not, like, like a piece of shit movie. It's just kind of really underwhelming and very strange. And then, uh, like, the worst uh, Jason movie is, is, is Part 8. Jason Takes Manhattan. That's just, like, virtually unwatchable to me. I, I don't think I'd ever watch that again. So, uh, unless I was doing, like, a full series review or something, but... Yeah, it's an interesting question, but it's easy to answer. Uh, let's see, the Game Master Eight says, Despite being someone who grew up in a Allegheny County, I don't think I've ever had the type of horrible weather during winter like what the North was seeing in the past decade or so. I think the worst I've seen personally was a blizzard that hit in 1994. That said, it sounds like you guys have had a hell of a winter this year, but I'm glad to hear you got power back and there's no long-term damage to your home. All right, let me, uh, there's more, but I want to just touch on that. Um, the winter itself was not that bad, to be honest. Um, we've had way worse winters. The past two winters before that were both way worse in terms of the frequency and quantity of snow. Like, we got, like, very little snow, and there were actually, like, a lot more warm days than there were cold days during the winter. And then we had this freak blizzard that, that you know what it was? And here's the thing. It wasn't so much about... The snow, because we've had like where you get two, three feet of snow. You know that happens in in this area occasionally, um, but you don't lose power. The reason that we lost power, and I don't know if I went into this when I talked about it, but it was the wind. It was the wind that caused the power to go out, and the the damage was so extensive that like I mean it's late July, and I still see the effects of that storm that happened 
you know, uh, in January. I'm sorry, no, was it late January, or early February, somewhere around there? Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I think it was later than that, because um, it was like a while between the storm and then like getting back and like doing the, the potato cast. So um, I think it might have been March, actually, early March. But um, it it's it's been a while, and um, you know. I still see trees that are down. I still see damage. Uh, you know, um, everything's working now, but I, I really do see that, like, it, it, the effects of it, and I think I will see the effects of it for years, in a sense. It was a crazy, crazy storm. And also the fact that it just went on for so long really hampered the efforts of the people whose job it was to fix the power. You know, there's a reason that it took so long for us to get power. Um, part of it was the fact that even after the storm ended, road conditions and everything were so bad and the extent of the damage was so widespread and so severe that it was, it was practically impossible to fix it overnight. Like some people were hoping for. And the other thing is that we had two more snowfalls during that, that weren't as bad, but they, you know, you can't expect a power company to send people out in dangerous conditions. You know, you can't, I mean, as, as important as it is to have electricity, it's, it's a level of egotism to the highest degree to expect somebody else to put their life at risk so that you can have electricity. You know, it's kind of stupid. All right, so he says, I only have one question this time around. Have you ever tried a randomizer of a game like Link to the Past, Super Mario Bros. 3, or Pokemon? I've been playing a lot of... Well, yeah, I, I guess you guys know by you know the answer to that by now. I've been playing a lot of key sanity randomizers for Link to the Past lately, and it's pretty fun. That that said, glad to hear everything's doing a little better. Stay warm, take care, Negro. Well, it's summer now. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, the storm sucked. Uh, you know, as for the randomizers, I mean, you guys know that I've been doing uh, randomized Nuzlocke runs for Pokemon games. I have played Link to the Past randomizer a little bit. I wasn't, like, super duper into it because, to me... It just seemed like just searching for chests. Like, it didn't seem as fun as it was going to be. It, it was just really a chest randomizer. It, it didn't do... Like, the fun thing that the Pokemon randomizers do is it puts... It, it, it's different enemies and, and different situations that you wouldn't normally run into. Whereas with Link to the Past, you're basically just looking and hoping that you get an item that's useful... And if not, like, like it, you can do a dungeon and just not get the item you need to beat the boss. So you just have to like, all right, well, we'll go to the next dungeon and, and then the next one until you, you know, find something that's actually usable. Um, I don't think Link to the Past randomizers that fun. I haven't delved much into too many other randomizers, but uh, it, it is a, you know, r randomness in gaming is, is something that always interested me in a way, which is why I like, you know, I like to play Binding of Isaac and such. Um, so let's move on here. BioPhoenix says, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I did check out Vindir a little while after I wa watched your last potato cast, and it was great stuff, so thanks for the recommendation. Uh, is there and metal bands, if he needs any, uh, you like that come from either Japan, Russia, and Brazil? Um, uh, no. No, I don't think so. I couldn't even think of a Brazilian metal band. Um, I'm aware of some Japanese metal bands but not something that I would recommend. Russia? I couldn't even think of a Russian metal band. I could think, you know, most of the, the music that I listen to in terms of heavy metal, at least, is either from this country or it's from somewhere in Europe. And I know, like, you know, Russia's kind of part of Europe, but, um, you know, like, it's usually like Norway or Finland or Germany or, you know, like the, you know... Those countries, the Nordic and Germanic areas, you know, and some British bands, the British band like, like Iron Maiden, of course, you know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I just I, I can't think of anything from those particular countries that you mentioned. So uh, shit, man, that storm sounds rough, but glad nothing serious happened to your family. OK, moving on. Aziz Light says, hashtag potato reminder story about your sister and ex-brother-in-law. Oh, shit. Oh, man, I'm gonna, I, I have so much to talk about. Do I, do I have time to talk about that? I'll try. If not. Give me a reminder on this video. Uh, hearing about how your parents' dogs have taken you is great. Well, I'm going to be talking about that, too, because there's, there's some drama with that. I've noticed that my dog is like a totally different person when he's alone with me and when my daughter is around. He treats her more like another dog and wants to play with her, so differently than when it's me or my wife. 
Um, you know, I wrote an interesting article uh, the other day. Well, so it was longer than the other day. It was like a few weeks ago, actually. That said that um, the same thing happens to a dog's brain when they look at humans than what happens to our brain when we look at a dog. Now, dogs know that humans are not dogs. They do know that we're, that we're different from them. But when they look at us, a lot of the same things happen. They react to humans the way that humans react to dogs. And which means that in a way, um, you know, kind of like the same urge you might get with a puppy when you see a puppy that you want to play with it. Um, she sees the baby and, or she, I don't know if your dog's a she, I just kind of assume that, that's weird. Um, your dog sees your, your baby and, I don't know if it's a baby, could be, <laughs> you said your daughter, I don't know if she's a baby, maybe she's a little older, but you know, but it, it, like a puppy, you know? And, and it's like, let's play, let's play, let's play kind of thing. So that might be the reason behind that. Heisensoul says, hashtag potato, don't feel bad that you shit on the Rolling Stones. I don't. Fuck the Rolling Stones. I like them, but they are far from my favorite band of all time. I asked you if your honest opinion you gave it to me, so I appreciate that. The situation with your family in the Nor'easter, I couldn't even imagine being stuck with my parents and dogs in a room for several hours, much less several days. Oh, God. We still talk about it. We still talk. We, like, we still come back to that. I like, remember being at the hotel. That sucked. Um, I would have been completely bald by the time I left to go home. One thing that... Oh, one thing... That, oh, wow, that was a long comment. One thing that would be a giant pain in my situation would be the fact that my dad is on oxygen and we would have to take his home machine with us to the hotel. Based on the story, you sound like a much more patient man than I am. When I was a kid, probably like seven or so, uh, this was in 1995, I remember playing the Virtual Boy at a Toys R Us when it first came out, and I was glad I played it because from the commercials and what it implied, it was like a full-on virtual reality system. I saw it and had to play it. I remember I played two games very briefly. Mario Tennis was the first, and I thought it was okay. And the other was Red Alarm, the flying game where you couldn't tell what was a wall and what was an open space. <laughs> yeah, that game sucked. After I played two games, I quickly realized this system sucked. Do you think VR is here to stay? Well, I kind of already talked about that. I don't care if it's here to stay. I do think it's... Okay, well, let me re, uh, let me like finish what you're saying. Or is it every bit the fat it was back in 1995? At least in 2018, the technology is light years ahead of what it was in the 90s. Um, okay, so here's the thing. I think that um, VR is here to stay in the way that 3D movies are here to stay. 3D movies first came out actually in the 19... Why is my phone going berserk? What is this shit? Oh... That's a that's a Twitter thing. Hold on, let me actually. I'm actually gonna pause the thing and, and answer that guy because yeah. Hold on a second, guys. It's a DM. I gotta answer this dude. I reached out to him earlier and now he's replying to me. So let me just take care of this real fast. Okay, I might have to pause uh, a little while later or something. Uh, just you know, um, I before I started recording this, I DM somebody on Twitter. They didn't answer right away because I. You know, I figured they weren't around or whatever. And I figured this guy uh, works all the time, is very busy. I figured I might get a reply like tomorrow. But then he just answered me. And I figured I would uh, follow up on that. So anyway, um, the fuck was I saying? Shit. I'm bringing my thing. Oh, yeah, the virtual reality thing. So, yeah, 3D movies. I started in the 50s. And it was a thing that was like very popular for a very short period of time in the 50s. And then, it, and then it came back in the, in the 80s, you know, and it was, it was popular again for a very short period of time in the 80s. And then it came back like a few years ago, and it was very popular, once again, for a very short period of time. Now, here's the thing. Even though the popularity of 3D movies kind of faded, like, um, you know, like Avatar was a big deal. It was like the number one movie of all time at the time. And that was a movie that was like a showcase for 3D, even though I didn't see it in 3D, which is kind of funny. I, I saw it in... 2D because I don't want to spend the extra money at the time on a movie that I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. But um, I kind of wish I did see it in 3D. But um, I saw a bunch of 3D movies and the quality of them would waver. Like I think the coolest thing I ever saw in 3D was like uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. That looked awesome in 3D. And then there were movies that I thought would look awesome in 3D that just I was like, why did I spend the extra money on that? It was didn't need to be in 3D. And I feel like the you know even though the 3D movies are still very much a thing. It's not as much of a thing as it was just a few years ago. It's already sort of faded away. And I feel like um, 
it, it, it's sort of happening already that, you know, maybe in another 20, 30 years it'll come back. And I kind of see, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not gone on as long, but I kind of see virtual reality as like the same thing where there was this intense interest in it in the 90s just based on the concept of it and people trying to make it work. And then they did, but it wasn't that good. You know what I mean, and then um, and and then they brought it back, and the technology is better, but you know, um, and there's always going to be the the people that are going to be interested in it. But I feel like when it comes to virtual reality, there's only two types of media that people are going to be drawn to, and that's horror and porn. Okay. Now the porn thing is really obvious. I do not need to explain why virtual virtual reality porn is a thing, or why it's going to be popular, or why why people are going to be into that, you know, or, or are into that rather. Um, there's no explanation needed with that. That's like blatantly obvious. The horror thing, I you know, I feel then it boils just down to jump scares. I think it really does. And jump scares can be an effective tool to use in a horror type setting, but you can't rely on it. And I'm sorry, I you're not going to tell a character driven story with a lot of tension and suspense in virtual reality, whether it's a video game or or a, you know or, or a movie or whatever or you know. And, and and yeah, there's things that are that are that might work like a you know like Resident Evil Seven in in virtual reality, but it wasn't created as a virtual reality thing. It was created as a video game that you would play with a controller and then they made a virtual reality version of it. And yeah, there's gonna be things like Elder Scrolls or Fallout that could work in virtual reality, but I don't need that to get immersed in those games because those games are immersive already. So I feel that like virtual reality only works by taking media that's already immersive and then giving you that extra step to immerse yourself further into it. But when you create media specifically for VR, I personally don't find it interesting at all. All right, so let me read the rest of it. When you took a walk down memory lane and talked about Ramat Pack, oh God, and you said he was going on to Harley forums and talking about you, it reminded me of this joke on The Simpsons where Homer kept talking about Ned Flanders in a similar way, about what a jerk he was or how he would make a better peewee football coach. Homer was sitting on his couch talking on the phone and was saying, I can't believe what a jerk Flanders is. He thinks he can coach or something of that effect. The guy on the other end who was hosting a call on radio show says, Homer, do you have a question for Sandy Koufax or not? I remember that episode with Homer responding before he was hung up with a yes, Mr. Koufax, do you think Flanders is a jerk? Although Homer is a lot more likable than Thunderball Troll was. Also, so you can tell the story, I don't think you ever mentioned your sister's divorce. I will get to that eventually. I don't think it's going to be today. Uh, before I end this, is it me or does it not make a whole lot of sense that you say I don't like anime, but yet some people are bound and determined to try to get you to watch. Well, we have been we've been over that a million times. I mean, you know, I feel like um, part of it is people get defensive, like when they like something, and then you tell them that you don't like it. They feel like you're saying you don't like them, especially if they feel it's like super important to them. Now, here's the thing. And this may shock some people out there, but I have a lot of friends who are really into anime. Like, I don't mean like they watch it. I mean, like they're really into anime, like super into it. And um, that's fine. And they know that I'm not into it. And guess what? We get along perfectly. You know what I mean? They don't try to draw me into it. And I don't try to draw them out of it because we're all adults and we're all mature and we don't you know, we don't um, define ourselves by our likes and dislikes because it's silly to do that. You know, it's just it's just crazy. And it's like I feel like some people also feel like um, like anime is so important to them that they kind of take ownership of it and they get insulted if somebody doesn't like it. And then they're like, well, you just haven't found the right one. And, and to me, that's like saying, well, do you like getting shot in the ass? Maybe you haven't been shot with the right kind of gun yet. You know, it, it, it's just like not saying that watching anime is like getting shot in the ass with a gun. But um, I'm just saying that, um, you know, let people like things and let people dislike things. And some people feel that if I say I don't like anime that I'm not letting people like things. And that's not true because you can totally still watch anime and enjoy it 
and let it, you know, and let it enrich your life in whatever way that you feel it does, that doesn't affect me, and me not liking it shouldn't affect that. So, you know, yeah, I fully agree with you. Uh, let me read the rest of what you said. I like wrestling. I really don't watch anything past, like, t- 2002, but I don't, people like, don't, ugh, but I don't tell people, oh, you don't like wrestling? Well, you should watch WrestleMania 12. It'll really change your mind. <laughs> Spoiler, it won't. The irrational thought behind that confuses me. Well, in any case, take care, Negro. I mean, it kind of confuses me, too, but I also kind of see the, the, the psychology behind it, I guess you'd say, in a way. Um, I, I just think, like I said, like when, when people grow up and they stop defining themselves by what they like or what they don't like, by their interests, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard people say, like, if you, you know, I can't be friends with somebody that doesn't like X, you know, X being anything, or I couldn't be in a relationship with somebody that doesn't like X, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, okay, why? You know, like, why is it so important to you? Because, like, it, it obviously, you, you know, people need to have something in common to, um, to get along, to, to have common interests and to, to be in a relationship, whether it's a friendly relationship or something more than that. Obviously, you know, you need to have something in common. But it seems to me like people are sort of like drawing lines in the sand and saying they have to have this in common and ignoring everything else. Nobody should be defined as an anime fan. And by that, I mean that anime fan should not be a description of you as a person because that's just one aspect of a person that's just one thing like um there's nobody that i've ever met that is only into anime okay maybe there are people like that and that's kind of sad because there's so many other things in life you should not be only into one thing i have so many interests you know and sometimes you lose interest in things and you gain interest in other things. And sometimes you rediscover things, and you know, maybe that you've forgotten or whatever. But um, to me, it's like it, people are so complex and, 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 uh, and multifaceted that if someone, it's almost like they're, um, they're making themselves like a character, not a person, but a, a fictional character and not a particularly deep one. That's like, say, you know, like if you were reading a, like a book. Or, or watching a movie and they try to characterize somebody as, uh, let's say, a, a metalhead, you know, and every single aspect of them in that media, whatever it may be, was metalhead. There was nothing else to them. They didn't have any other interests. They didn't talk about anything else. They didn't think about anything else. They, they were just that and nothing else. At that point, what do you have? You have like like Beavis and Butthead, you know. You have a cartoon. You don't have a, a person, a realized person. You have a very flat, one-note character. And by the way, I'm not talking shit on Beavis and Butthead because I fucking watched that show when I was a kid. And I still think it's funny as fuck. But nobody is going to say that they're uh, complex characters. They're not even complex characters by the standards of cartoons, much less by the standards of, of, of humans. So, you know, just, just wanted to say that all right last one is berserker uh zero 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 one hashtag potato one thing me and my family will do when the power goes out which it did for a little while during the lightning the beginning of the storm is i'll pull up the D books and i will run us through a short bullshit campaigns to help us pass the time until either one the power comes back on or two we decide to go to bed yeah we can't do anything like that because um yeah it was just impossible like first off we had you know we had no light and the power went out um like you understand it wasn't just we were without light. We were without light. We were without heat. We couldn't cook food, and we couldn't leave. We were stuck in the house um, until the storm ended, and even then, it, it took as you guys, as you heard, it was it was incredibly difficult to leave. And then, and then we had the two dogs, you know, and and it was just it, we had to leave for our own safety. We basically had to evacuate. Um, yeah, and and the thing is, it's such a stressful thing. Like nobody. Like, if I said, hey, let's play fucking Monopoly, they're going to be like, I don't want to do that now, you know? And, and then you're going to be playing it by candlelight because guess what? Even during the day, there's no sunlight because it's a fucking storm. So, yeah, that's a thing. Um, okay, so that's all the questions and comments and things. I do, I already feel a little better. I'll be honest with you guys. I already feel like, um, like, uh, you know, that I feel better. So let me just say that, um, 
Hold on a second. What the fuck? What is this guy telling me? Somebody just messaged me on Facebook about the angry video game nerd ass simulation videos tell me that I missed uploads. I, that's not likely that I missed uploads. It's likely that I probably didn't name them right. So let me actually check on that now, because I literally just got this message, even though I published those videos yesterday, whatever. Um, they might be the wrong name. Oh, no, I didn't miss an upload. I just named it. It says part 10. It actually should be part... Should it be part 8? Let me see. Yeah, it should be part 8. All right. 8. Oop. Okay, that's fixed. Let me let him know that I fixed that. Okay, so, yeah. Well, thanks to... It was actually Chris Collette letting me know that. I was like, wait a minute. Let me fix it then if that's true. Okay, so um, let me just talk to you about what's been going on and why I'm like in such a fucked up spot right now. Um, so I've been stretched out these last couple of months because um, I've been looking for a job this whole time and uh, nothing's panned out in that sense. Like I, I haven't found shit. Uh, so I've just been like trying to find just like kind of anything. Uh, so that's like one part of it. That's like just one thing, but I just wanted to get that out of the way in case anybody was asking me about it, you know. As you guys remember, I was working at the doctor's office. They fucking laid me off right before Christmas, like literally just a few days before Christmas. And uh, everything kind of spiraled out since then. Um, haven't found another one. Um, been looking, haven't found one. So that's just sort of one thing that's been going on. Uh, Dad still has cancer. Um, you know, that's been kind of an ups and downs. He's been having good days and bad days. Lately, over the past few weeks, I've been noticing a few more bad days, but I don't want to say that in like the fully most negative sense because I feel like the bad days that he's having um, are not bad cancer days, but bad reactions to the medication days. He's been taking this chemo, uh, which is in pill form now, but it is still chemo. It is still poisonous. And he's been taking this for like a while now, every day at 6.30. And uh, 6.30 p.m., not early in the morning, but um, he's been taking this every day and it's been it's been hurting, it, not hurting him, but it's been affecting him. And, um, you know, and then he, he gets all pissy and because he's not feeling well. and That's stressful on everybody else. Um, like everybody in the house has just been kind of like feeling like shit. Like my mom has been having like really terrible headaches. Um, her insurance company has been fighting her on, um, like, like, you know, pre-authorization kind of shit, you know, that kind of bullshit. She's been having problems with her doctor. And then like, I've been having bad headaches myself. Uh, you know, I, you guys know I'm prone to migraines. I threw out my back, um, two days ago and it's been hurting like a bitch since then. And you guys know I'm always in pain, but like, it's, it's been like more than usual. Like I, I was just talking to AJ the other day and I said, Hey man, I'm just in fucking searing pain. This is fucking fantastic. And you know, of course being sarcastic and he's like, what is it this time? And I go, it's the same thing. It always is. It's just worse than usual today. You know, like my back's always hurting. Um, you know, and, uh, it's just like really bad. And then I, even my leg, my, my fucking knee that, that I fucked up, uh, back in May was st well, you guys don't know about that, but, um, in May, my parents went on vacation and it was just me and the dogs here for like a while. And um, the first night, Gibbs slept on my leg and fucked it all up. Like it was all swollen and shit. And it, it was like, it was a couple of weeks. Like it was at least two to three weeks before it felt like okay again. And even that was starting to act up the other day. So I'm just like feeling old and broken down and tired. And I haven't been sleeping well. You know, I'm stressed out about it. I haven't been sleeping well. Stress the fuck out. My uncle's in the hospital. My uncle Pete, that's my dad's oldest brother. He's in the hospital. He might be in the end zone here. We don't know. He went in for um, pneumonia and, um, you know, my uncle Pete's an older man. He's My dad is 70 and then my uncle Pete is the oldest of his brothers. My dad is the youngest of five children. My uncle Pete is the oldest one. Uh, so there you go. You can, you know, guess how old he is. So, um, you know, and he's been in poor health for like quite some time and just sort of declining in health. And he's been in the hospital with pneumonia. And then there was some like miscommunications, like some of our cousins, cause they, they, you know, uncle Pete and all these people are in Ohio and they're in like, um, 
they're in like fucking Ohio and they're telling us things like he had two heart attacks and then we find out he didn't have any heart attacks but he had some kind of like a tachycardia situation going on he was in the intensive care unit for a while um he got out of it and now he's back into it um they're having issues getting him nutrition um and then my dad is like kind of in the dark about this this is his brother that he cares about a lot and uh People aren't calling him and telling him the information because they're worried about him because he has cancer and he's not the strongest and he doesn't need the fucking stress. But then we're worried that, you know, Uncle Pete might pass away. And uh, if Uncle Pete passes away, my dad is definitely going to want to travel to Ohio and and attend services. And then there's the other problem. How is that going to work? Because we've been having fucking problems with the dogs. So you guys know we have the two pit bulls, Gunny and Gibbs. We've had them since they were little babies. They've appeared in a couple of videos. The two main videos that they appeared in were... You know, the first one was just called like Pitbull Puppies, which is when I wasn't living here. But I came to visit and see the dogs. And I like made a quick video of them. It was like a shitty-ass lighting. and they're you know, But they were just playing with each other. And then I made one kind of recently. It was Pitbull Puppies Got Big. It's a year later. Um, and I, you know, showed you guys Gunny and Gibbs and how big they got and, you know, and everything. And then these dogs are absolutely great. They're some of the coolest dogs ever. Um, and, you know, recently Gibbs has become aggressive, um, towards his brother, towards Gunny, not towards any people. And, um, you know, they've had fights in the past where like they would just suddenly go at each other or they would get angry with each other. And, you know, you'd pull them apart or whatever, and, and then they'd be fine. And they never really hurt each other, you know, but they would just, you know, had dogs on, they get into fights, you know, sometimes, especially brothers. So anyway, but um, it's always been a little bit of a concern because you don't want them doing that because they are so big and so strong. They can hurt each other or hurt somebody very easily. So anyway, um, Gibbs became really super aggressive towards his brother and just like went after him. One day when I was coming out of my room, um, in the morning, I was just trying to get up and go to the bathroom. You know, that's like, oh, okay, I don't set an alarm. I always wake up at the same time because I always got to take a shit, you know, and I get up and they're usually waiting right outside the door, trying to get at me, trying to jump at me, trying to go crazy. And I'm just like, dude, just let me by. Let me, let me get to the bathroom. And I usually try to just push past them and kind of ignore them because they'll just jump all over and claw me all up and shit. If I go in there, I go in the bathroom and then I come out of the bathroom. They're usually a lot more calm. But anyway, um, they immediately started fighting as soon as I opened the door. Like, they went after each other. I couldn't tell who was the aggressor. It's usually Gibbs, though. Uh, it, like, I think it definitely was Gibbs. Um, I put a stop to it. Let me just see what this is. Is that Chris or is that somebody else? Yeah, it's Chris. Okay. Well, it's fixed. Um, so anyway, um, anyway, um, fucking... Uh, you know, so Gibbs is, you know, like doing that and we decided, you know, we got to do something about it because he, um, he got hurt because Gunny is actually bigger than him and Gunny is a little scared of him. But at the same time, like when Gibbs goes after him and like bites him, he's going to obviously fight back and, and Gunny got a little hurt. Um, nothing, nothing major, just like a little cut on his head, you know, no big deal. And, uh, we separated them. My mother was really angry at them for a while. Um, I was really angry at them. And then um, I was out, out of the house um, for for like an afternoon, and uh, my mom called me because I was a little later coming home than she hoped for. You know what it was? Is my nephew was here? My nephew Bobby was here, and he kept asking Uncle John, "When's Uncle John John coming home?" He was even texting me like, "Like, are you are you coming home? Are you coming home?" That kind of thing. And I was like, "Dude, I'm doing something. I'll come home when I come home." You know. But anyway, um, and yeah, yeah, Bobby texts now. He, he doesn't spell very well, but he texts. So anyway, um, you know, my mom called me and I was like, no, nah, actually on my way home, I'll be there in about 10 minutes, you know? And he's like, oh, okay. Cause you know, Bobby's going crazy. And she's like, also Gunny and Gibbs got into a fight again. And I'm like, oh my God, what happened? And she said they were, they were playing and all of a sudden Gibbs got aggressive and, uh, started biting him and then Gunny overpowered him and, and Gibbs got hurt again. So I come home and they're fine, you know, but you can tell there's something, there's some weird. And then, so, you know, we're sitting there we're all in the living room and, uh, Gibbs goes into the other room and, uh, the, the, the kitchen and drinks some water. And then he comes out and he goes up to his brother and his brother's just standing there, just, you know, looking doopy. And he comes over and he starts like licking his face. And we're like, Oh, okay. They're getting along. He's licking his face. And then all of a sudden he lunges and, you know, and I, re you know, I jumped across the room and I pulled them apart. And I know they say never pull, 
two dogs apart, but like, you know, fuck it. You know, I'm, I, I can handle that, you know? So I pulled Gibbs off of him and I yelled at him. And, and it's funny because like, as soon as I got him off of him, he just went like all docile, you know? Yeah, I'm talking about you. He's right behind me. So anyway, that was twice in one day. We separated them, you know? Um, so Gibbs is always with me. He's always on a leash. He sleeps with me now. Well, not in my bed. I won't allow that because he hurt me the last time we slept in the same bed. He hurt me. Uh, not like attacking me, but he fucked up my knee by resting his head on it all night. And that hurt for like a long time, as I mentioned, like three weeks. So anyway, um, well, it was three weeks until it hurt less is what I should say. So anyway, I, I fucking, um, I'm just like, oh my God. So now like everywhere I go, I got to have his dog with me. And probably because I've had him with me now, he's like so ridiculously attached to me that I can't even leave the fucking house. I go to pick up Bobby in the morning, something that takes like five minutes or Nathan, you know, we, we always have one of them over here during the summer because neither of them have school, you know, and my grandmother can't be expected to deal with both of them at the same time. So we always bring one over here. They take turns, you know? So uh, I go over, it takes 10 minutes to bring him back and he cries the whole time. <gasps> You know, like, and, and they tell me he cried the whole time. And I was like, doesn't he usually cry when I leave? And he goes, yeah, he'll cry until the car is out of the driveway and then he'll be okay. But now he's crying the entire time. If I leave the house for a few hours, he's moaning and groaning for a few hours. So now he's like so attached to me. I can't even get myself away from this dog. I can't even have one fucking moment of peace. And I like him a lot. You know, I like spending time with a dog. I don't mind having him sleep you know, in the same room as we got a dog bed set up next to my bed so he can sleep right next to me but not be in the same bed. Um, you know, I don't mind it. He gets me up really fucking early in the morning, you know, but I don't mind it. But I don't have a moment to myself. I got all this other shit going on. And now they can't be together. And um, now we got to worry about the possibility that we may have a death in the family. And, um, you know... It, it's just, it's insanity, you know? And, and, and then I, I just want, I don't want to talk about this too much, this next thing. But on top of everything else, I still have to worry about Hitomi. Because, you know, she's been having her drama for so long now, and nobody fucking cares, you know? Like, I'm the only one that fucking cares. Me and her brother are the only ones that fucking care anymore, you know? People say they care, but they really don't fucking care, you know? That's why I stopped talking about YouTube, because... Every time I fucking mention it, you know, she gets nasty comments. I get nasty comments. I could give a shit about getting nasty comments. It bothers her, not because she gives a shit, but because she's in a fucking vulnerable position. And she's been through the fucking ringer, um, you know, the last couple of weeks and months. And, and, and uh, you know, thankfully, I'm not the, I, I say me and her brother are the only ones that care. It's not actually true. Uh, there's one other person is my friend Charlotte. My friend Charlotte came on. And really, really helped me with dealing with this all with with his homie and 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 just you know befriended her, and actually also my friend Corin also really helped. So there's a little bit more of a support not only for her but for me as well. But she's in an incredibly dark space. Um, her brother's in an incredibly dark space. I'm in an incredibly dark space. I mean, and we try not to like feed off each other in that sense, you know. Um, and I'm really worried about her, you know, um, her health, not just her mental health, but also her health health. Just because this girl's been, you know, going without food for so long, and 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 it's just insanity. You know, she was in the hospital for a while. You guys don't even know that. And and some people think if I don't mention anything, that means everything's okay. And that's kind of like what led to all this because she got a job for a while. Everybody thought, oh, you have a job now, you don't need any help. And she said, hey, look, the first three weeks, I'm not gonna get paid. You know, they don't pay for training in Japan, which I think should be illegal. It's illegal here. Uh, person works, whether it's training or not. If they're working, you should pay them. But their laws are different. And she didn't get paid. And then, like, she wasn't able to cover rent. And she actually wound up losing an apartment. She wound up homeless for a while. She wound up in the hospital. And and then I, and I don't even want to get into the full extent of that. But she spent, like, quite a while in the hospital. And, uh, you know, it, it, just, it just really fucking sucks. And I, I don't want to get too into it. But that's another thing that really fucking sucks. So everything fucking sucks. So we decided we got to do something about the dog. we got to do something about Gibbs. Because we can't put them together. We tried putting them together, and here's the thing. First of all, Gunny's, like, kind of done with it, you know? Gunny doesn't want to be bit. Gunny doesn't want to be attacked. Gunny doesn't want to fight. So 
if Gibbs comes near him, Gunny kind of is like, hey, dude, don't come near me. And sometimes that takes a foe of, of, of growling at him. You know, Gunny is not going to attack him. We know that because he never has and he probably never will. But he'll defend himself and he doesn't want Gibbs to come near him. He's a little freaked out. So if Gibbs comes near him and he growls and then Gibbs sees that as a challenge and then all of a sudden he's got attack, you know. So, you know, we tried to put them together a few times, you know, with them on the leash and, you know, and, and just trying to like do it real slow. And sometimes they just sort of sniff at each other and they're fine. And then sometimes one of them will like growl at the other. So, you know, we decided we got to do something. So we took him to the vet. Um, this morning, uh, me and my mom took Gibbs to the vet to see uh, if there's anything medically wrong with him. Because if there's something medically wrong with him, uh, we need to know and address it. We need to know what, what's wrong with him and address it, and hopefully we can fix it. So we took him there, and um, this is what's been bothering me all day and, and, and why I'm in such a bad mood. And um, Well, <laughs> on top of everything else, but this is why I'm in a bad mood today. We took him to the vet. And, uh, you know, that, that was just a rough thing. He doesn't like the car, you know, he, he's scared. His brother's not there with him because oh, almost every time they go in a car, it's the two of them together. So at least they have each other to lean on. But this was him alone. Uh, he peed all over me when I was getting him in there, like, you know, trying to lift this 85 pound pit bull into the uh, back of a fucking truck because my parents can't ever have a normal car. And, uh, and he pees on me. That's great. So I drive all the way there with piss on my hand. I got a little paper towel, but I'm like, I need to wash my hands. The whole time I'm there, I'm like, I need to wash my hands. I need to wash my hands. You know, they had like Purell there, so that, that really helped. I washed my hands and sanitized and everything. And then he peed on me again when I was getting him back in the car. You know, that. <laughs> and he peed all over me. He peed on my leg and everything. I was like, all right, go home, take a shower, you know. But, um, so anyway, the way it worked is we brought him in and um, the doctor came out. He was seen like almost immediately, which was nice. And, um, you know, they asked, is this the aggressive one? And we're like, well, he's aggressive towards his brother. And they asked a lot of questions like, is he aggressive towards people? Like, no, he's definitely not aggressive towards people. Is he food aggressive? And when you say I'm with a dog, is a dog food aggressive? That means if a dog is eating and you go near him or you go near the food, is he going to growl at you? Is he going to give you the whale eye? Is he going to bite you? Absolutely not. I could fucking reach into his mouth and take food out of his mouth and he would give it to me. And that's the thing. He also hasn't been eating right, but we, I think that's stress related. I think he's stressed out because of everything and the way he's been kind of isolated and everything and he hasn't been eating right. Um, he hasn't really been eating breakfast. Um, he eats dinner, but with some coaxing. The doctor didn't think that was a big deal. He says he can just eat once a day. That's fine. He doesn't need to eat breakfast as long as he's eating. But, um, you know, the doctor asked a lot of questions. Um, I said I, he did. He gave him uh, a couple shots for. Uh, he it just, it were just vaccines. Um, they were boosters for his vaccines because uh, he was just a little overdue for boosters anyway. So he was like, "Well, I'm going to do that." He took some blood to test some things. You know, the main thing that he seemed to want to test for is a thyroid imbalance because he said that can cause, you know, sudden aggression like that. You know, um, but let me just tell you how good this dog is. Like, he got he got three shots in his side. And you could tell he didn't like it. You know, he was whimpering. He was, you know, cowering about it. But the, the the doctor gave him three shots. And then these other two people came in. I guess they were veterinary technicians. And they had to draw blood from him, which is a little more difficult. Because they got to find a vein. And then he's got to be still. And he wasn't digging it. And he's like, oh, you already poked me three times. And now it's four. And actually it was five. Because the first time they couldn't get any blood. Because he kept moving. So they had to poke him again. And let me tell you, after being poked four times, the doctor put his hand up his ass to do a rectal exam. This dog turns around, looks at the vet tech that just stabbed him in the leg with a needle, and licked his face. That's the kind of dog he is. So this is why we're, you know, it's like I feel like there's got to be like something that can be fixed here. There's no way he's just a bad dog. He's such a good dog, you know what I mean? And, the, you know, so he was done. Well, I took him to be weighed. They weighed him. I took him outside. I took him for a walk. He took a shit. I picked it up, you know, all that shit. Put him in the van. Got peed in the van, the, the truck. Got peed on. Sat there, you know, because my mom was still in the vet talking to him and everything. And I sat there, you know, fucking playing Sudoku on my phone. I texted my sister, let her know what was going on. So she, my mom comes out and she's like in tears. And I'm thinking like, oh God, this is something bad. But then I'm thinking my mom's like always in tears, like anything you know, she's in tears. 
not saying anything bad about her, but she's just so stressed out and, and like always in pain, you know, from her migraines and shit. And it just doesn't take much is what I'm saying. So I'm like, what's wrong? What's going on? And she's like, we might have to rehome him. And I'm like, what the fuck? All right. Like, tell me what the doctor said. So the doctor basically was like, oh, I'm going to run the blood test. We're going to check for anything medical. But if it's behavioral, he thinks we should rehome him. And the reason he thinks that is because he's going to need extensive training. If it's behavioral, he's going to need extensive training. And with my mom in the condition she's in and my dad in the conditions he's in, he doesn't see that as being feasible for us. So he's thinking for us and for him and just make it easier just to rehome him. Now, here's the thing. Both of these dogs are rescue dogs. We, you know, there was a contract that was signed that said, you know, we no, don't rehome them. And the doctor's like, well, you didn't, you didn't sign a contract saying you'd have to put yourself in danger. And he feels like if they fight and we get between them, that we're putting ourselves in danger. And he's like, you shouldn't ever do that. Never pull them apart. Don't get between them. Just get a broom and like smack them at the broom and they'll separate, you know? And, and yeah, that's a thing. But like something, you know, like unless you have a broom in your hand and they're right there and I'm going to grab them by the collars, I'm going to separate them. It's worked every time. And yeah, maybe I've been lucky, you know, but these dogs are not going to fucking attack me. I know that. I feel that in my fucking heart. You know, Gibbs is not going to attack me. Gunny is not going to attack me. They're certainly not going to attack my parents. They, they're just, for some reason, Gibbs has got to attack Gunny for some reason. And, and now, so, um, we decided later on that it's just, you know, the answer to the whole rehoming thing is, is no, no, fuck no. You know, that'd be like the very last resort. Um, if we've tried everything and nothing works. So we're still waiting on test results. We've actually talked to a behaviorist and, um, you know, she says, she told us the things are doing right. She told us things are doing wrong. And in case you're wondering how we got a behaviorist so fast, turns out one of my, my sister works in a doctor's office, just like I used to. And, uh, she had a patient that was a dog behaviorist. So she talked to her and then, then gave us the number or whatever. My mother called her. She says, uh, she told us the things are doing right. She told us things are doing wrong. Um, and, and told us kind of like what to do and then she'll come and train with him. And that like the, the sessions like are going to be like hours long. It's going to have to be me there because my parents can't handle this shit. Um, so this is another thing on my plate, you know, I mean, this is another thing on top of everything. I'm, I'm fucking an emotional wreck. I'm in a dark place and now I got to deal with this and, and the stress of it. You know, I'm really worried for Gibbs. I really am. I'm really worried for him. And I'm also worried for my parents because they can't bear with losing him. You know what I mean? If something happened to him, whether he got rehomed or, 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 or worse, it's just, it's a devastating thing, you know, um, to anybody, but especially to my parents, you guys know the history we've had with dogs, you know, the love we have for dogs and we know the tragedies that we've had with dogs and it's just really rough. So, and the, and they're young, um, you know, they're like a year and a half old, you know, both of them, they're from the same litter. And, um, and the sad thing is they actually like fucking miss each other. Like they're whining for each other. They, they want to be together. But then maybe Gibbs gets a little close and Gunny kind of is like, hey, back off, man. You know, and it starts. So, and it's like, it, it, it's not just training one of them. We're going to train both of them. So this lady's going to have to come in and it's going to have to be extensive training. She even said that she would take him to her place for like a week to work on him if that was necessary. So, you know, that's sort of like the positive thing, but like, like I said, it's, it's everything. It's everything. It's, it's, it's trying to find a job. It's worrying about Hitomi. It's dealing with the fact that I have a, an uncle that may die soon. It's, which I don't necessarily believe that he's at death's door, but a lot of people in the family seem to think that, you know, it's dealing with the dogs. It's, dealing with my own fucking problems like like my own mental health that is always fucking tenuous as fuck okay i had to deal with people fucking with me i didn't even get into people fucking with me i just had a whole fucking big blow up about nothing on fucking discord with this dumb motherfucker okay and it was about nothing and maybe i'll tell you guys next week about that Leave me a comment. Somebody leave me a comment to tell you about what happened on Discord with this dumb motherfucker who decided to get in my face about something that wasn't even about me. Like, I'll give you guys the the, the, very, the extremely short end of it was there was a discussion happening on a server. Like people were talking about something, 
I gave my opinion on it. That went on for some time. We came to a conclusion, and the discussion stopped. Uh, nobody was mad at anybody. Nobody harbored any ill feelings. At first, I was like, um, I, I jumped in because I thought the other person was maybe being a little weird, like a, like a little like a little racist, you know. And then I realized that they were they were talking in good faith. And the things that they were saying were about were, were based on bad information, basically. And once they got the good information, they were like, "Oh, right, you know." Uh, like I said, maybe I'll talk about this next week. Um, and uh, I, I felt like you know I had something to say, and there was a discussion already going on. As I said, I jumped in. We talked about it for like five minutes, ten minutes. I think it was more like ten minutes, and then it was over. And um, and this other motherfucker comes in, mentions me, wait, where you do like the whole thing where you at someone. They call it a mention on Discord. And tells me that the, the discussion was in the wrong channel of the server or whatever. And I'm just like, I'm not the one who picked the channel that was in, you know? Why are you calling me out? There was a discussion that was happening and I... And I, I, I answered it, you know, like I, I joined something that was already going on. And you're going to mention me and tell me it's in the wrong area? I didn't start the fucking discussion. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the guy got like fucking angry at me because he got, this is what I love. He got angry at me for getting angry with him. Because I told him, you're calling me out for something that has nothing to do with me. If you think that that discussion was not appropriate for that part of the thing, talk to the person that started it. You know what I mean? Or everybody. Don't talk to literally the last person to join in the conversation and single me out. You know, don't disrespect me like that. I told him, don't disrespect me like that. And then he got mad at me because he thinks, you know, I'm the server admin. I can disrespect anybody I want. You know, he can go fuck himself for all I care. I'm not part of that Discord server anymore. I never will be. I have no interest in it. I, I don't, you know. People who um, make their own little internet thiefdoms, it's, it, it's always amusing to me. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about, by the way, like, like a YouTube channel, for example. I'm not talking about that. Because obviously... Nobody should come into your YouTube channel and disrespect you. If you have a channel and somebody comes to your channel and disrespects you, you have every right to tell them to fuck the fuck off. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can tell them to go blow a goat and block them or whatever. You know, some people block, some people don't. Um, personally, I don't anymore. I used to do it a lot. Now I just don't give a shit. I only block somebody if they're becoming a real nonsense and it gets boring after a while, you know? Um, but if you, you know, if you really don't want to deal with anybody anymore, I should just fucking block them if you really don't want to deal with them anymore. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone who thinks that they can, okay, let me, let me, let me put this in a way that you guys can understand. If, if there was a comments thread on one of my videos where people were talking about something, right? And then I, you know told the last person in the comments thread that it shouldn't, this whole thing, this whole comment thread should not be on my video. That would be a douche move on my part because I, I should talk to the first person who had it, not the last person, you know what I mean? It's like if person A says a comment and then person B says a comment, and then person A says a comment, and person B says a comment, and they go back and forth a little bit, and then person C comes in and has a comment, and then A, B, and C talk, resolve it on their own, and then it ends, and then I come in at the end and I say, you know, person C, you really should have not done that on my channel. That's like, what the fuck, who does that shit? That's a power trip. 
you know that's deciding that you're gonna fuck with somebody simply because you can and that's like you know and it's just bullshit and i don't i you know you guys know me especially if you've been around for a long time i don't deal well with people disrespecting me you know what i mean if i feel that somebody's been disrespectful i'm gonna let them know it i'm gonna let them know now there was a time where i would i would hit back with the equal amount of disrespect but I, I, that, that was the past. That was the past me, you know. And, and you know what? I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying that I've grown and, you know, that I'm better now. Because, well, I'm better in some ways. But I'm not saying that it's wrong to do that. If somebody disrespects you and you want to disrespect them back, I say go for it. I say go for it. Turnabout is fair play. If you think it's constructive and a good use of your time. I'm just at the point where I get so much shit going on. I don't think it's a good use of my time or my energy. And that's really the the key is energy. I don't have the spoons for that kind of shit, you know? I literally do not have the fucking spoons. Well, not literally. I figuratively do not have the spoons for that kind of shit. You probably think literally, like, you have spoons? You should probably put them in the drawer. No. um, I don't have the energy for that kind of shit. And I have to make kind of an executive decision for my own self, for my own mental health and physical health, because they're tied to each other, to say, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother with this. But if somebody disrespects you and you don't wanna go back at them, you don't wanna give them the turnabout, you still should say something. You absolutely no person has the right to just disrespect another person. It, it, you know, it's not the right thing to do. And if somebody does it to you, you got to say something. You got to stand up for yourself. You cannot let people disrespect you because people are like sharks. Sharks are generally pretty docile creatures, scary looking with big teeth, but they don't really bother you. But one drop of blood in the water and they go into a feeding frenzy. That's what sharks do. They sense weakness They sense food, and they lose their fucking minds. And if you guys are picking up the metaphor, which I think you are, because I think you're all quite intelligent to pick up the metaphors that I give, you know what I mean. People sense weakness. They will exploit it. And that goes for your friends. It goes for your family. It goes for your your husbands and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends and, you know, whatever you got. They will exploit your weakness sometimes not even meaning to sometimes without even knowing it sometimes subconsciously they'll do it and if you show that you're weak that you will allow yourself to be disrespected without saying just allow yourself to be disrespected obviously you can't stop people from disrespecting you but you cannot allow it I mean, and not, not, not that you can stop it from happening, but you can say that you don't have to put up with that. You can be, I, I'm not, I'm rambling right now. Ah, I'll tell you a deep breath. Let's, let's get coherent again. You don't have to put up with it. And if you put up with it, you're sort of disrespecting yourself. You're sort of putting yourself in a position where you feel that you don't deserve to be treated right. And other and people, whether they realize it or not, other people, you you know, unrelated third parties will lose respect for you. They will, because they're like this person doesn't even stand up for themselves. Why would I stand up for them? You cannot wait for someone to come to your defense. You know, if someone does come to your defense, you know that's all great. You know that that's fine. That that's a good friend or whatever. But you have to defend yourself. And I'm not talking about. You know, going out and kicking someone's ass. You know, I'm talking about telling someone that you will not put up with that kind of shit. And when somebody disrespects me, I I tell them, who do you think you're talking to? Because you don't talk to me that way. Because I feel that when I interact with people, I speak to them with respect. Now, there have been times where that I don't, you know, because we're all flawed. Uh, There was a time where I got into an argument with a very good friend of mine. Like a whole big thing. And then I looked back at it. Not the next day, but like pretty much right after this whole fucking argument. 
And I looked back at it and I was like, wow, I was being a real fucking asshole. Because I, she, she was trying to talk to me. And for whatever reason, what maybe whatever was going on in my, I, I think I did have something going on in my head that I wasn't in a good place, you know, but that's no excuse. I lashed out and I disrespected her. Not that I like said anything bad about her, you know, but I didn't treat her respectfully. And then I looked back and I realized that I didn't treat her respectfully. And I was like, look, I absolutely have to apologize for this because I wouldn't put up with that. Why should she put up with that? So, you know, we're cool now, by the way, me and this other person whose name I'm not going to mention, but we had a whole big knockdown drag out argument and it was 110% my fault. <laughs> it was just like, I was being a dick. So, you know, when I'm talking about this, never think that I'm perfect or that I'm the one that has all the answers at all times, or even that if I do have the answers that I'm always going to follow it because we're all flawed people. But an important part of growing is realizing when you're wrong and, and making it right, which I did, you know, and that's why we're cool now. If I had been stubborn and, and been like, well, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to apologize because I don't want to seem like the weak person. No, the weak person runs. The strong person swallows their fucking pride, their bullshit machismo, you know, pride, and says that they were wrong. That's a lot stronger than pretending like it didn't happen or saying, fuck them if they can't take a joke or that kind of thing. Because... That, that's just hiding. That's just hiding from your responsibility. I was responsible for what happened, and I made it right, you know? And, uh, you know, it, it, and, and you know what? And part of it, I think the reason I realized that I was being the dick in that situation was because, well, part of it was because I read it back, but what made me read it back was she said, I don't understand why you're acting this way. And instead of trying to explain why I was acting that way, I decided to figure it out because I didn't know why I was acting that way. Well, I knew why I was acting that way. I was acting that way because I was depressed and in a dark space and she came at me at the wrong time, so to speak. Not her fault. She doesn't know all that shit. And even if she did, that's not her fucking problem. That's my fucking problem. You know what I mean? I'm the one with the problems. I can't lash out at people and then say, oh, well, you know, I have a lot of problems, so you have to forgive me. No, that's bullshit. You know what I mean? I, it, it doesn't absolve me. It doesn't mean that I can be disrespectful. So I'm not above it. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not completely above it. You know, don't think that I'm coming off as holier than thou or, uh, or, or you know, like the, the wise guru that knows everything. I mean... I know it's wrong because I fucking did it, you know, and it's not the first time. And I can't say that it's the last time because who knows what's going to happen. But improvement is not about never doing the wrong thing. It's about trying not to do the wrong thing and working towards succeeding at that, you know. So, you know, don't don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm lecturing you guys because I'm so much better than you. I'm, I'm just like you guys. I really am. I'm just like you you know, because I'm human too. And, uh, I know what's wrong because I've done it. And so have you, so is everybody. There's nobody that's never, you know, not been a dick, you know, and disrespected somebody. And it's not okay to do that just because we all do. It doesn't mean it's okay. You know, something, it, it, it's sort of like, um, no, what's a good, what's a good metaphor here? It, it's sort of like, it, it, you know what? It's like, it's kind of like breaking the law. Like everybody breaks the law, you know, no matter who you are, you've broken some law, either because you didn't know it was a law or because you disagree with it, or it's something really petty that shouldn't even be a law, or maybe you're an out and out criminal or whatever, but everybody does it. That doesn't mean that the concept of law is, is fucked and that everybody should just, you know, like break every law and we should have like the fucking purge, you know? You know, the reason that, that we don't want the purge is because 
we need certain laws. You know what I mean? We need certain. And, and when I say laws, I don't mean literally laws. I mean like rules of society. You know, we need boundaries. We need certain people to uh, stay in their spaces. And when I mean that, I mean uh, not to encroach on other spaces, not to come at people with bad intentions and, and come at them in bad faith. So I hope I'm making sense. Here. I think I am. But anyway, um, you know, we, we, we're all criminals in one way or another. Everybody's broken the law. Whether you've, you've, you've uh, killed someone, which I hope nobody that's listening to has killed somebody, or you've done something like downloaded something you shouldn't have, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe like the hundreds of thousands of copies of video games that are on my computer for Nintendo and Sega Genesis and PlayStation and all that shit, you know, that's not legal. I know it's not legal, you know, but that doesn't mean that it, you know, just because I think it's, uh, it's okay for me to do that doesn't mean it's okay for me to go and rob some bitches, you know, that, that would not be right. So, um, just because everybody at one point or another is a disrespectful douchebag doesn't mean that it's okay. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't excuse it. So when people come at me and they're disrespectful, I don't put up with it, you know, and, um, and you can say, well, how could you, you know, take a hard line stance on that when you've done it? And it's like, ah, but that's what I told you guys about, about standing up for yourself. If you don't stand up for yourself, like we may, you know, if she didn't stand up for herself, my friend that I mentioned, if she didn't say like that I was being unreasonable and that I was being disrespectful, we might not be friends now because I was really angry for reasons that I don't fully understand. She was really angry for reasons that I fully understand. And I'm going to just say, fuck this. I don't need this person in my life, you know? And then what I realized is, no, I'm the idiot here. I'm the one that's wrong. And I apologize. And we're cool now. You know, it wasn't like instantly. We were like instantly cool. But that's, you know, it's been several months and we're cool now. We're very, we're very good friends. So, um, you know, and, and you're always going to have that situation. We realize that you're, we're, we're the asshole and you got to man up. You know, and I don't say man up in the, you know, the masculine sense. Uh, women got to man up too, I guess. Uh, you you got to, you got to, uh, there's got to be a better metaphor than man up. There really has to be something better than that. Because that's kind of, it's like an unnecessarily gendered thing, you know. There's no reason for it to be man up because sometimes uh, uh, grow up is a better, you guys say you got to grow up and, 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 uh, and be the, and be the, not the bigger person, the bigger person than you used to be, not the bigger person than the other one, you know, so to speak. So I don't put up with people fucking disrespecting me for no fucking reason. This guy came at me on Discord about some bullshit that I really honestly do not care about. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't like like he's telling me, oh, it's in the wrong area of this the the server. Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? He's saying like like basically telling me and only me, by the way, that if I see a discussion about something, but it's like not relevant to whatever overly specialized channel that they have, that I should not answer it, or maybe I should you know, I guess, uh, mini mod and go in there and saying, you guys, you're not talking about this in the right area. You're supposed to use the channel for the other thing. And then it's like, well, that's being a douche, you know? I mean, I, I could, I could do that. And maybe they would say, oh yeah, you're right. And take it to the other thing. But that's like, who is that helping? You know what I mean? Or I could just decide to not, to ignore it and not answer, you know? Or I can go running to the surgery room and they'd be like, oh, oh, Mr. Admin, they're, 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 they're talking about triangles in the square room. Do something. Like, come on. You know what I mean? Come off of it. Bunch of fucking weirdos. There was only, like I said, there's only two people on this fucking server that I cared about. One was a friend of mine who invited me and the other was Hitomi. You know, everybody else, I don't know them. I'm not going to say everybody else can suck my dick or whatever, because I don't know them. They're not friends of mine. They're just people that I've never met, will never meet. Perhaps they're wonderful people. 
perhaps they're fucking assholes. I don't really know. And I don't really care. You know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't affect my life. It's just another fucking aggravation, another fucking stress on top of every fucking other thing. How long have I been going for? This is, it's going to be like a long time. Oh, fuck, all right, a minute and, uh, a minute. An hour and 14 minutes. I'm going to stop here. Leave me some comments. I'll try to get to, I'll try and do this again next week. I'm really going to try. I really, really, really am going to try. But, you know, I just have so many things I haven't done. Uh, there's a cooking video. I've uploaded it just a little while ago. It took forever. I haven't published it. it. List critics. That's recorded. Haven't uploaded it. It's the 26th, and I haven't fucking recorded list critics too. It's just everything's a fucking mess, you know. So, forgive me for not being super diligent and keeping up with you guys. I am trying. It's just as you heard, I have a lot of shit going on, and YouTube is unfortunately not always going to be at the top of my list. I try to make time for it. I've been recording as much as I can, but with everything else going on, it's uh, it's rough, you know. And that's part of the reason people didn't understand back when I made the change. I made a big change. I stopped doing request videos, partly for the obvious reason that I was bored with them. I was very, very bored with them, and I didn't want anything to do with it anymore. I felt that I had done everything that I needed to do, and I wanted to make a change. But a big part of why I chose to go to just Let's Plays and, and Features is because I wanted to start recording things in advance. Because the daily grind of having to sit down every single fucking day and make a bunch of videos... Some days, it, it wasn't in me. I didn't want to do them. And then the quality greatly suffered when I didn't want to do it. And I've had people here on BotatoCast who have said that towards the end of the request videos, they felt they weren't that good because my heart wasn't in it. And, I said, and I'm like, thank you for saying that. Because I get 50 million comments telling me, why don't you do this anymore? You should go back to doing this. This is why I subscribe. This is what I like. Do this, do this, do this. And they don't even care if it's good. They don't even care if I want to do it. You know what I mean? I don't want to do that anymore. And 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 part and, and then there were some days where all I wanted to do was record videos. So I thought, on those days, I can just get a shitload of them done. And then upload, you know, when I, you know, so if there's one day that I don't want to do videos and one day that I want to do 10 videos, then there you go. And I got to the point where I have such a buffer that when, when I need to, which I needed to late last year and early this year, I could take a break and not record any videos and still have hundreds of fucking videos to upload. And, and, and that's, that's so important to me that I still do this, that I still upload and that I still have a connection with you guys because this has been a part of my life for 10 years now and uh, a little longer than 10 years actually but I've uploaded for 10 years and it, a little longer than 10 years but it, it's been an important part of my life it's been a huge part of my life um, it's not a career by any sense of the word but it, it's something you know it's 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 an important thing to me for obvious reasons and I've been doing it for a very long time and I want to keep doing it but I don't want to do it every day. There's, there's some days where I just don't want anything to do with YouTube. And then there's some days where I don't want to do anything but YouTube. And that works out for me. You guys can get your daily, almost daily uploads. And I can record when I want to. And that's why this works. You know what I mean? It's been rough trying to do more up-to-date stuff like movie reviews and potato casts. Because more recently, it's been... I don't want to do it. You know? But then... Tonight, it's, it's, it's like nearly midnight. I should be going to bed soon. I just felt like, you know what? I'm stressed out. I'm in a bad mood. Discord shit put me over the edge. I was already really fucking... This is like the worst day, you know, dealing with the dogs and my uncle and everything. And um, there's some few things I didn't mention because I forgot. It's kind of coming to my mind now. I'm not going to get into it now. I want to end this, but... And, and then this fucking asshole on Discord... <laughs> Like fuck you, dude. You know, I hope you. I hope you. I don't know if he if he knows me on YouTube. I mentioned a few times on that server for the, uh, you know, like a few months that I was part of it that I do YouTube. And I don't know if anybody looked me up, but I hope you're listening to this. Fuck you. You know, that's all I have to say. You disrespected me. You're a douchebag. Okay. And uh, 
you, you could take your whole fucking server and run it any way you want, but I won't be part of it. I won't be part. Even if you came to me and you apologized, you said, you know, look, I did disrespect you. I shouldn't have done it that way. I shouldn't have handled it that way. That was wrong, and I apologize. I'll accept your apology. We'll be cool, but I will never fucking join that server. There's no way because it's toxic. I'll be honest with you. It's toxic. Maybe I'll go next time I do this into why it was toxic and why I'm glad to be shot of it and why it was stressing me out. It... It, it, there were things that were discussed there that made me extremely uncomfortable. There were things that were posted there that I didn't want to see. There were like four or five channels that I had just completely blocked so I wouldn't even get alerts on them. And because it, it was content that I wanted nothing to do with, absolutely nothing to do with. But then even then it would bleed out and go everywhere anyway. So that's kind of why I'm glad to be shut of it. But, um, you know. Hitomi's still part of it, as far as I know. And they better fucking treat her right. Because if I hear one fucking word that they're disrespecting her, uh, she doesn't have the energy, the inclination to stand up for herself now. But I'll tell you, me and her brother will come after those people like the wrath of a fucking dying star. It didn't totally make sense, but it sounded cool. See you guys next time, hopefully next week.